Oh yeah, we get a problem of power series today. So this is in section 8.7. This is actually on page 788, and I'm going to work on problem 14. The series is n equals 1 to infinity of the square root of n times the quantity 2x plus 3 to the n power. And we're supposed to find the radius of convergence and the interval of convergence for the power series. So. I went ahead and wrote that power series down. How do I find the radius of convergence? Well, notice here that I have some piece that's got n in the exponent and some piece that doesn't have n in the exponent. I'm running one of those 10 power series tests. This is a good indication I'm going to run the ratio test. So that says I need to take the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of the n plus first term over the nth term. And this, of course, is the nth term. Uh, how's that work? That's the absolute value of the n plus first term. That's the square root of n plus 1 times 2x plus 3 to the n plus 1 over the nth term. Square root of n. Let's see. And then I've got 2x plus 3 to the n. OK, these reduce pretty well. If you have n plus 1 of them on the top, n of them on the bottom, and you divide, you're just going to get 1. What about this piece? Now, it's all positive, so I won't worry about keeping the absolute values on that. Then I've got one of these. Your x value could somehow make this uh, positive or negative. Uh, but this piece right here, this is, this is constant with respect to n. What's square root of n plus 1 over n? Well, uh, the way I would solve that is I'd multiply cleverly by 1 over the square root of n, 1 over the square root of n. OK, what's that do? Actually, I'll take it back. Multiplying by the 1 over the square root of n is sort of like dividing the numerator by 1 over the square root of n. So you could do that, but I'll, I'll end up with basically the same thing just right here. If I So the square root of a numerator divided by the square root of a denominator is just the square root of n plus 1 over n, right? 2x plus 3. Well, and if you think about this, that's the square root. Since you have a single denominator, you can divide that up. That's just 1 plus 1 over n, all times the absolute value of 2x plus 3. Now here, notice that the limit as n goes to infinity doesn't affect the 1 at all, but this piece goes to 0. We have the square root of 1, which is 1. And so this whole piece goes to the absolute value of 2x plus 3. Now, when does that converge absolutely? That converges absolutely as long as that's less than 1. Okay. So I'm trying to find the radius of convergence. Now, remember, in general, if you have sort of a number line and it's centered at a value c and I want a radius of r, how do I get points x that are within r of c? You say the distance between x and c is less than r. So that's sort of that sort of you can see the center, you can see the radius. How do I get it in that form from this form? Well, the answer, I'm so glad you asked that. The answer is to take that equation and to make it into something like this by dividing everything inside by 2. So I divide by 2 and I get x plus 3 halves is less than 1 half. That means that means that the center of my interval is negative 3 halves, right? It's supposed to be the difference. And my radius is 1 half. Woohoo! OK, so now I know most of the answer to the second question, but the problem is the endpoint. So the interval is going to be centered at negative 3 halves. I'm going to add a half to negative 3 halves and get negative 1. Subtract a half from 
negative 3 halves and get negative 2. The problem is I don't know whether these are included, these endpoints are included or excluded. So really when you're trying to find the interval of convergence, you want to look at that endpoint. So I have two problems left to do. I have to take this and I have to plug in x equals negative 2 and x equals 1. So let's start x equals negative 1. So for x equals negative 2, let's see what happens up here. Okay. So let's see. In that case, I have the sum n equals 1 to infinity of the square root of n times, let's see, that's negative 4 plus 3. So that's just negative 1 to the n. Hmm. Okay, so what test shall we use here? I don't think the individual terms are even getting small. So I will say the limit as n goes to infinity of the individual terms of root n negative 1 to the n. See, this is flipping the sign, but this piece is just getting bigger. Whoops. I don't think that's getting smaller. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that doesn't equal 0. So, it diverges by the divergence test. Okay. Well, you might see where I'm going on the second half of this as well. Uh, with x equal, so that means this point is not included. That is not a convergent point. Now I need to take negative 1. Uh, well, if you plug in negative 1, you get something fairly similar. Can you see that if I plug in a negative 1 up here, I get negative 2 plus 3, which is 1 to the n. 1 to the n, that's just about the same as 1, right? So this is really just the sum n equals 1 to infinity of the square root of n. Again, those terms don't go to 0, so that fails the divergence test. This is not equal to zero. This is not equal to zero. So divergence by the divergence test. OK. So that point is excluded. And that's my answer.